Uh, let's get in and explain what D6 is all about. Um, it's a little bit more than the skin. The skin is um, technically just to, to lay out the look, um, how things look. Um, but I've got quite a bit of functionality within this that's uh, not standard with um, the inside skin or that come with the app. Um, so first of all, the way this works, I've got one page as a home page. So um, with the inside skin, you've got um, different pages for the different functions. Um, those four tabs that would be at the top where you've got your, um, your steam, your espresso, um, your hot water, or call, whatever it's called. Um, that's what these buttons are here. They're basically those tabs and they just start automatically. So um, instead of switching pages, we just start on this one page. Um, and if I want to run a hot water, I would um, uh, tap that icon there. If you're using a uh, version 1.4 machine or newer, um, you can't start from a, a function from the tablet. So you would start that on your group head controller, um, but it, it would operate the same way. So when you start that function, it's going to change and you're going to get this red outside ring. Um, and it's going to tell you what's happening and you're going to have a red hand indicating that you can tap here um, or you can use your group head controller to stop that process. So um, that's basically the home page. Um, what we've got here is uh, what I call DSX backend or, or admin section. So we've got, I've got two settings buttons. Um, this set, setting button here goes to the settings that you can see when you, um, we're using a different skin. Um, so it's exactly the same in there. Um, this button here goes to DSX settings. And DSX settings has quite a few pages. Um, and the way to scroll through those pages is use these arrow keys. You can arrow forward or backwards with those keys. And then to exit out of the admin section, you'll use the home button to return home back to here. So if I go in there again, we can scroll through and you can see there's lots and lots of pages. So we'll um, endeavor to get through what uh, and describe what they're all about. So one of the first features that come to DSX, um, when DSX come about was um, D stands for Damien, for myself, uh, S for skin, and X is because I started doing um, uh, version one, version two, version three, then up to version four, and then um, I was keeping this, the versions going and, and maintaining the, the separate versions, and I decided that um, I wanted to reduce my workload and just have one skin, so I just called it X, um, just marks a spot, so to speak. Um, so now we just have VSX, and that's where the name come from. But, um, so one of the functions, and I think John was uh, is looking at um, introducing something similar with uh, Insight soon, and this is something that we use daily. Um, I have these cups here, and I call them favourites. So what a favourite is is uh, you tap that cup, and it sets up. Uh, all your settings, not just the profile, but your entire machine settings to what you've saved for that favorite. So for instance here, we start on the left hand side. This is our preparation side. So we start at the top, we look, we've got the grip um, temperature, our steam temperature and the tank volume. So just a little bit of information about um, our machine. Uh, here's our setup, what's gonna happen um, with our profile. So our profile name, we've got um, the bean weight so we can record our dose. Um, we can record our, uh, we've got our information here about where our sh uh, shot's gonna stop. So it's gonna be a, a one to 3.1, and it's gonna stop at 50 gra uh, five grams. Um, so just on that, DSX is very much orientated to uh, using a scale. Um, it'll work without a scale, um, but it's, uh, it's built around the scale because that's what I use. Um, so a lot of the functions are you know, related to the weight. Um, so it, it can stop on volume though. So if we go into a profile, which we'll, we'll have a look at it in a minute, you've got um, um, a, a, what they call stop at volume. Um, and because this is an advanced profile, um, the abbreviates advanced here. If it was a pressure profile, they would, um, would state pressure there. So it tells you what profile type it is. Um, but in an advanced profile, we can stop it at, 
and the chosen step. So it's showing that information and it's showing the setting we've got there. So if I was using a different, if I load a different paper, you can see here I've got the um, stop of water, uh, or stop the volume turned off for that, save for that. So that goes, when I select those cups, it resets all this to the relevant information. Um, it sets the flush time. Um, so with these, we've got a uh, flush timer. Um, and I can show you how to, to set that in a minute. Um, so now if I start the flush, um, you can see the time is counting down and it gets to the end of the time and uh, turns off. Um, the time has actually got an extension to the timer too. You can see here there's three seconds showing there. So if I tap that now while it's counting down, that adds that three seconds across to here and extends the timer. So um, you might use three seconds for normal shots, but you might want to have an extension for some reason for the end of the, for the, end of the day or something like that. So anyway, that's what that feature is. Um, our next bit of information here is um, steam. Um, so our steam time, uh, in this case, is set to 39 seconds. That will save with the uh, favourites as well. However, for my use, um, I weigh my steam. So I put my, um, um, my jug with milk in it on the scale um, and I tap this icon here and that sets the time so they get the exact same temperature uh, regardless of what weight I've got in my jug. Um, and I'll, I'll go into more detail regarding that shortly. Um, and then the final line of information here we've got is uh, the water setting. So um, with hot water pour, um, if you've got some settings you can set for that. You can set the volume if you want to come out and uh, the temperature of that water. Um, so basically this section here tells you, uh, gives you a glance at what's going to happen um, with all your functions. Um, we've got this icon here, which is um, an image or an icon of the milk jug. Um, and what I've done is, um, when I refer to setting the weight by tapping this icon here, uh, where I weigh my milk jug with milk in it, and I tap this here and it uh, sets the time, um, there is an option to set three jug sizes. Um, um, so by tapping that icon, I can scroll through the different jugs. So if I was going to steam with the small jug, um, it would set the... Uh, the weight we've calibrated for that jug and so forth. So um, that's what that is. Now, you'll notice uh, here, this is all blue. So that text is blue and these asterisks are blue. And that indicates that all those settings are set according to what I've saved as my favorite. So if I was to go and change one of those settings now, um, say I go onto this page and I uh, just change the steam time and we go back, you can see that asterisk has gone white. Um, so if the asterisk goes white, it means you've changed the setting that's different to the uh, what you've saved as favourite. Um, and that way you can, uh, can glance at that and you go, okay, that's different. Is that supposed to be different or is it meant to be um, the, the default that you saved? Um, and if you tap the, the blue cup again, it'll set those uh, all blue again. And there's also that indicator here. So that dot there, um, will go away if one of those settings aren't um, what's going to say to the favourite. Okay, so you've got three favourites here, you can just set them and you can see they change colour. Um, let's go into some of the setup. Um, we'll have a look at uh, steaming first. So if we go into um, the back end, into the admin section, the first page that comes up is the workflow setup page. Um, and this page is where um, you're going to set everything I described here, basically. Um, and you can get there by tapping this section here too. So you can tap there and you go to the same page. Um, so we can set a beam weight. Um, and you can see I've got that set to 18 grams. Um, if I was to go up to 20 grams, it will show a different extraction ratio here. So some people like to extract to a certain extraction ratio and you can just watch that while you change the setting and, um, and set it that way. Um, this is the uh, extraction, uh, the stop at weight, sorry. So um, that's where it's working at the uh, extraction yield from the extraction ratio, so from there. Um, we've got this section in the middle, which is gonna tell us what's gonna happen between our dose and extraction as far as um, 
moving on at weight function, which uh, it's a new feature and uh, we'll, we'll leave that for a little bit later. Um, the next section, so this is your espresso section, the settings for the espresso. Um, this is settings for steam. So here we can change steam time manually. So if you're not weighing um, steam and you want to change the time, you would change it here. Um, and here you can select a, a different jug, which one you use. Um, which you can do on the, on the home page anyway. Um, the reason I've got it duplicated here is because this is where you would save your favourites. So these cups here, if I tap one of these now, whatever settings I've got here, it would save to the favourites. So rather than go to the home page and select the jug, I can view it here and I can select and change it here. So. Um, this section here is for flush. So we've got um, initial flush time here. And then you've got that extended time where I was showing you um, when I tap that button for the second time while it was running, um, that'll extend the time by whatever setting you've got there. Um, and then this bottom section is the hot water section. So here's where we set the volume if you want um, and the temperature. Um, this uh, also has a, a stop and wait feature for hot water. So I've got it turned off. If I turn that on, um, it's given me a warning here. Um, I've got it set to stop at 20 grams of water, but because my volume is set to 10 mil, it's um, asking me to check my, my volume setting. Um, because what's going to happen is um, the machine's going to stop whichever event comes first. So if it reaches 10 mil first, or reaches 20 grams first, it's, whichever it's, it's going to stop. And because I don't want it to stop at, um, at the volume, I need to increase that. Um, and that message is going to wait now. So now it'll stop um, at, at weight. Um, and this here is an offset for that weight. So if you find um, um, you're ending up with more weight in the cup than what you, um, you've got here for setting, you can set an offset, which basically tells the, um, um, the app to stop or tells the machine to stop uh, a little bit early so that um, when it actually gets around to stopping the last water comes out, um, it will be an accurate, an accurate weight. So now if I go to the home page, we've got an extra line there, which is the water stop at weight setting, and it's telling us that's turned on at 20 gram. Um, if I turn that off by scrolling all the way down, um, that line disappears. Okay, so that's our setup page. Now, if I want to set up a, um, a new favourite, so let's go into uh, what I did there was I just clicked here to go directly to the profile list. Um, so I, I go in there um, and say so I want to select the profile. And just say, um, let's, let's just select the default profile. Um, now, let's say I'm using. Uh, my, my, my normal weight for this would be, um, say, 18 grams. So I said 18 grams. Now, um, I, I weigh my beans and that'll change for each shot, but I, I generally aim for that target. Um, you can go to the profile page from here as well. You can tap the profile name. Default is the profile name. Um, I'm going to do a, say, a two to one shot. So I've got 36 grams coming out. And it's telling me my extraction ratio there. Um, I, I'm going to make a, a latte out of it. I want to steam, say, 200 grams of milk. Um, and I know just from my experience, that's going to be um, about 39 seconds, 38 seconds. Um, so I can set that as my default, but that will change when I lay my milk anyway. But if I wasn't using the scale, this is where I would set it. Um, and I would just be accurate in, in measuring out uh, the volume of milk that I was putting in my jug and then it would stand to the same temperature. Um, my flush time, I generally just use three seconds. I find that's fine for me, so I have that set. Um, not that all the time. Um, and I don't use hot water. Obviously, don't use hot water for a milk drink, so you know, there's, there's no point in changing that. So if I save that now to my orange cup, I tap this cup here. And it's told me, puts a message up there saying it's saved. And if I go to the home page and uh, select a different profile, now I tap that cup and it's loaded all those settings I've set.
Okay, so that's uh, favourites. Um, the next um, section of the home page is we've got this section here, which is uh, basically just the control. Um, there's a lot of information we'll tell you in the middle. So if your machine's still heating up, it'll tell you to wait. Um, it'll tell you if you put on a shot, it'll tell you the step, the profile step uh, that's currently been uh, executed. Um, if, for instance, you're pouring steam, it'll tell you pouring steam. If that stops by timer, um, it'll tell you to tap uh, purge and so forth. So it's just a lot of information there. We'll have the countdown timers if they're relevant up here. Um, and then we'll change colour uh, according to whether it's uh, in standby or in operation. This icon down here, this large icon down here is the scale. Um, so you can tap the scale here and it'll tear. Um, and also if the scale is disconnected, it will um, uh, flash here disconnected. Um, it'll flash the word disconnected. Uh, and if it's disconnected, um, so long as your scale is on and transmitting, of course, um, you can tap the scale and it'll reconnect for you. Um, so I've just, I've just got some uh, dummy buttons which you can't see. So I've just teared that for uh, illustration purposes. Um, if I was to uh, weigh, say, 18 grams, weigh um, my beans, I, I put my cup on here, my niche cup, um, and weigh out 18 grams of beans. Um, and then I will tap this icon here. And what that does is uh, transfer that weight um, to my bean setting. So to demonstrate that, I'll just change that um, bean setting to something else. So I've got 11 grams there. And now when I tap this icon here, it uh, transfers that amount. So my workflow starts out by putting my um, bean cup on the scale, um, tearing the scale, and then weighing out my, my dose, 18 grams, um, and tapping that button, and that sets that. Um, I then weigh my milk, and I do the same thing. So I make sure I've got the jug size correct, um, and I mainly use the medium jug. So I weigh out the, the milk, um, and what we're seeing here is a, a gross weight. Um, and here we're seeing a net weight. So what I'm doing is tearing the scale first, so it's zero, putting my um, milk in the jug and then putting my jug on the scale here. Um, and it will give the net weight up here. So now if I, uh, if I tap this side of the icon, it will calculate the steam time for that volume of milk. So I've got 214 grams um, within the cup, so I'll tap that and it'll set this steam time. So set it to 38 seconds. Now, if I put, you can see here, if I've got more, it's uh, set it to 52 seconds. Um, so now when that steams, um, it'll steam to the same temperature each time. Um, and I'll just go into uh, how to set that up. So if we go into uh, the, the admin section again, and we scroll through, um, we've got, Uh, steam by weight setup page. Um, this is a one time setup, so it sets up um, the, the weight for our jugs and our calibration for that function to work, for the steam by time function to work. Um, and it also sets up a net weight for your bean cup, which I'll, I'll go back and explain that in a, sec in a second. Um, so to set this up, you've got a cross here. We can hit that cross and we'll turn it off. We'll basically just wipe the information you've got set for that, um, for that jug, or the weight you've got set for that jug. Um, and if that's off, um, it won't show up when you scroll through those jugs. Um, it will just scroll through the two that you've got set. Um, or the, you've only got one set, it uh, won't scroll at all. Um, to set a weight there, we put a weight on our scale. Um, Net, weigh our jug empty, uh, and then we just tap here, and it transfers that weight to the jug. So now we've set a uh, dry weight for our small jug, and we do the same for our medium and, then, and for our large jug. Um, so once we've uh, set up the weight for the jug, what we want to do is put some milk in, um, and you want to weigh that milk first. 
um, before you steam because the steam will have a little bit of weight. So you weigh that, um, how much milk you've got in there um, and put that figure in here. Um, then steam it um, using your thermometer and steam it to the temperature that uh, you like. Um, and then take note of how long it took to steam it. Um, in my case, the steam um, to 94 degrees C, uh, 228 grams, um, it takes 41 seconds. So I put that time in there and now we're calibrated. We never have to change that again, unless of course you change your steam power settings or something like that, then the steam rate um, changes, then you uh, recalibrate. Um, or if you, you find that uh, you decide you want your milk a little bit cooler, you can just knock a couple of seconds off. Um, that's a quick way just to adjust it. And, okay, so this here is also a net weight for the uh, for um, my boon joke. So my, my little niche cup that I use, which is um, one of these that comes with a niche. Um, I just sit that on my scarf and then tip some beans in with my little scoop. Um, what we've got here, you can see this is there's an on um, button there. So if I go back here, I'll try and increase that to where it shows the value. So you can see here now, um, that's showing 14.8 grams here. And what that is, is um, it's taking into consideration the net weight of that jug, uh, not the jug, the, um, the bean container. Um, and it's recognizing um, there's somewhere between, I can't remember what settings I've got now, I think somewhere between 10 grams and uh, 24 grams. Um, it's it's recognising there's a difference to that and it's saying, okay, well, there must be um, beans in that cup. So it's, it's setting this value here. So now what happens is if I tap this bean icon here, um, it sets that base up in my beans. So there's two ways to weigh your beans out and add them to the uh, to register them as the, as the bean weight. And that is um, first to tear the scale um, with the cup on it. So it tears, um, and then when you weigh your beans, um, you get the actual weight without the cup. Um, and the other way is to set a, a net weight in the settings section here. So I've got, uh, my cup weighs uh, 123.2 grams. Um, and the advantage of that is um, normally I would put my cup on tear and then scoop my beans in and weigh them. But um, if I could then go take my cup off and I go do something else, um, I, I can't then tear the scale again with the empty cup because I've got beans in it. So I can now sit that cup with the beans on, or tear the scale first, sit that cup with the beans on, and we'll put that 80 grams up here and I can um, use that button. So it just gives you a couple of options there. Okay, so now we go to the right hand side. Um, we've got a, a clock here, you can turn it off and on uh, within the settings. Um, and I'll, I'll go to that in a minute. You can also set your own uh, heading up here. You can call that whatever you like, um, or change the color, etc. cetera. Um, so this side we've got uh, information about what's happening while you're um, uh, pouring the shot or doing the steam. So you've got um, espresso graph here, um, and you've got a steam graph here. Um, to either of those graphs, you can tap on them and then tap back and they'll enlarge the graphs. Um, so um, this X graph page is, is quite a bit different uh, layout than the um, other graphs you might see. Um, I've got all these buttons down the bottom here. Um, and basically what we can do is um, we've got zoom buttons. So on the side here, you've got a couple arrows which indicate that um, you can move that page up and down. You can see I'm moving that page up and down by tapping on uh, the left side of the graph. Um, and then we've got zoom, so we can zoom in. You can see that Y axis, um, is Y axis is getting smaller, so it's zooming in. Um, and we can zoom out and we can just reset back by tapping reset. Um, so now the graph has got a lot of information. Oops, the graph's got a lot of information and it looks quite noisy. Um, so I'm usually turning things off. I turn off 
like the delta, I turn off the um, uh, resistance. Um, you can you can turn off all the all the uh, curves that shown on the graph. You can turn them all off. Um, so I just leave the ones on that I want to use. Um, so you can turn off the temperature, uh, turn off goals, steps. So you can you can just make it a bit clearer to what which you want to look at. Um, if you want to look, uh, there's a special function for temperature. So I don't have a separate temperature graph. Um, so if I've got the temperature curve on, you can see here there's a, this button says zoom temperature. If I've got the temperature curve off, it just works as a reset button. Um, so when that's set the zoom temperature, if I click that, it's going to zoom in, um, give you a nice view of the temperature. It's going to center it and everything for you. So you don't have to move the page up and down or zoom in. Um, it's going to zoom straight in on the temperature. And it's going to tell you that key is now 10 times. So um, that's 88 degrees uh, C. That's 99, uh, 92 degrees C. Um, and I can reset that graph, go back to the way it is. So it's, it's just a shortcut, quick way to zoom in. Okay, so we've got information here, which um, you can view this graph while you're uh, pouring the espresso. Um, and it's just got the information here. So this will um, obviously change, the duration will change, um, and the water volume will change, and the weight here will change um, in real time. Um, and a lot those buttons have got the same information on them as well, so um, the flow rate, etc. This information here has got uh, two steps, um, and that you'll be familiar with that with uh, with other skins as well. Um, you've got a pre-fusion step and a pause step, um, and same with the time. You've got pre-fusion time and the extraction time, or pour time, and then just the totals. So. So I think that's uh, pretty well covered the graph. You've got to start, you can start and stop the graph from here with this button over here. Um, it tells me here what profile we're running um, and, and today's date so, and time. So. Um, with the X6, uh, this graph doesn't show um, the, the graphs that John creates for the profile, the um, preview type graph. Um, this graph will keep the uh, last shot you make. So um, when, whatever shot was the last shot you made, it's always going to show on this graph. Even if you uh, close down the app and reload again, it's going to show that. And the same with the steam, it's um, just going to show the same steam graph that you did last time. So um, if you went into settings or something um, and you come back, it's not going to disappear, it's just going to be the same. Or if you change profile, it's not going to change, it's just going to keep that, that graph. Um, so it's a little bit different there. Okay, so let's get into how the skin looks. We've covered pretty well the operation of the skin, I think. Um, uh, there's another setting on this page, there's a, a fast fill here. Um, I may end up taking that out. Um, if you select that, it's going to um, speed the pumps up. It, 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 it's only going to apply to um, LRV2 and LRV3, and it's just going to make the pumps run fast before the profile starts. So that uh, um, if we look at the graph here, um, you can see that the water starts at about um, well, it starts at about two here because out it flows on this side about two meters per second. Um, what it aims to do is start from here, so. It's, the idea is to give an um, initial um, hammer of water to compact the puck a bit more. Um, I'm not really finding it makes a big difference, but anyway, that's what that is. Um, so if we have a look now at the, uh, the setup page, this is uh, the theme setup page. And this is where you set up how the skin's going to look. Um, here you can change the heading, so you can call it um, whatever you want, your coffee. Um, and if you go to the home page, you can see that's changed. Um, you can change the colour of the heading. You can uh, tap this button here, um, and select a different colour. 
So you can see it's changed colour. Um, you can select the font. Um, I know a lot of people don't like Comic Sans, but anyway, there's plenty of fonts there. You can add your own font files. I'm sorry, I've got quite a few in there, but um, you can do so long as it's a TTF font file or a, I think it's a TTR, is it? I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, so long as it's a right font file, um, and then you can just select that uh, font. I mean, it's OTF or TTF. Yeah, okay. Um, to change the background color, I've given uh, five options here. Um, of course, you could change one of those images yourself if you wanted to. Um, I generally don't change any images in my uh, skin updates, only code files. Um, so if you wanted a different color or a different uh, an image as a background, you can change one of those images um, within the file itself. Um, so you can select the black or different colors. Um, here you can select the different dial and you can set up that dial. So on the home page dial, that's uh, what it's going to look like. Now, we've got three options here. Um, you set up the bezel, which is this outside. So I can set it um, what I call clock, which has got the graduations. I can set it, um, this was the first one I made. Um, so I just call it my original. Um, or I can set it as a, that style, what I call green. Um, I use the clock one myself. Um, icons, we can use uh, DSX icons. Those are the icons I made. Um, and I've also made a copy of um, the icons that uh, John made, uh, which looks similar to the, the group head icons. So you can use those icons instead if you prefer. Um, and the layout you can change as well. So um, the D13 layout, is uh, the layout of, that's on the group head controller. Um, so you've got your espresso on the front and the border behind and then uh, left to right. Um, and you can change that to a different layout if you prefer. Um, the next setting we've got is uh, the font. Uh, sorry, this is a zoom setting, it's not the font. Um, what we do here is we can set the uh, Y axis uh, for the zoom graph. So this is because I've changed some of those settings, it's going to ask me to quit. Um, with this graph here, this Y axis uh, is, is starting at, uh, from 0 to 12. Um, what I can do is if um, I want to start that at, say, uh, the longer or shorter y-axis, um, what I'll do is go in here and I could set that to something else. So now it's starting at 10. Um, you can see when I go into this graph, it now starts from zero to 10. So you can set that um, to whatever default works best for yourself. Um, so I'll just, I'll just leave it at 12, but that's what it is. So as long as it starts anywhere from six to 15, you can, you can set that to. Um, these buttons here, um, if you're not using a scale, you can tick that uh, button there. Uh, and again, it's gonna ask me to quit. So now what that's done is put a little plus and minus here. Um, so I can now tap on the bottom or the top here um, and, and set weights that way. So if you don't have a scale and you still wanna use some of these features, um, or you can use a manual scale, um, and weigh your milk, for instance, and then um, transfer it across, or you can put your bean weight in and transfer it across. Um, or, of course, you can just go in here and, and set them manually if you prefer. Um, that's what, what that um, button does in the settings here. Um, hide clock, so if you want to hide the clock from the home page, um, you can select that. Um, so the clock looks up in the corner. You can turn that off. Um, and original clock format. So the clock format, the original clock format is in uh, Comic Sans and I'm not sure why, but some people have complained to me saying they, they detest that font. Um, so what I've done is made an option where I can, you can turn that off um, and the clock will use the font, whatever font you select for your, um, your, your skin font. So 
let's uh, let's set up the look the skin. Um, let's get, I'll just open up a, uh, a file browser again and go into the skin folder. So this is the DSX folder. Um, I'll just go into here because I don't want to mess up files in there with the files that I give to you guys. So in the DSX folder, um, You've, you've got all these folders. Um, when we do an update, you're mainly going to replace this folder here, the code files. Um, I'll advise um, if there's other files you need to change, um, but generally you just replace that there. Um, what we've got um, as of version 4.0, um, we've got a new folder called DSX plugins, um, and that's this folder here. So in this folder here, I've got all these files here, which are plugins. The ones that start with DSX are kind of standard. Um, there's no actual code in those, well, there's a little bit of code in there, but most of the code for those files are actually in the main app, in the program file, so that when I update, um, they'll update when you update this folder. Um, however, what my plan is here is to enable people to create their own plugins. So a couple of examples I've given are um, this EY calculator and Pizza Day. Um, and what they are, they're standalone uh, plugins. Uh, they don't have to be, they can have uh, control of the app or use data from the app. Um, in this case, the Pizza Day um, EY was an extraction ratio. Um, I'll just move that out of the way. Um, for that plugin to work, you just dump your file straight in there. Um, and there's, um, That's good. So if, if I open that up in the text editor, um, there's only three lines of code that you need. Well, there's only actually one line of code that you have to have, but um, we can go more into that if people are interested later. Um, so what that is, is when I add one of those plugins um, into that folder, um, it's good. this is a, a plugin in itself. Um, this plugin shows the list of plugins and, and you can activate them and deactivate them. Um, so this is a list of plugins um, that I can activate and deactivate. The ones you can't activate that are um, tied in with the DXX um, core code uh, won't show up in the list. Um, for instance, these are the two uh, plugins that I, I was just describing before, we've got the pizza dough and extraction uh, calculator. So if I uh, tap on this plugin now, or one of these plugins, it just transfers it across to this side and makes it inactive. So you can see that it's telling you there that um, it's, it's been uh, deactivated. Um, so you can turn all your plugins off pretty quickly or, or turn them on if you want. So um, if the plugin um, has a line of code that says, um, describes uh, the page name, it adds it automatically to the DSX backend. So it adds your plugin page um, into this carousel of pages. So if I scroll through here, um, go through all these pages, then you can see here, um, this is our pizza dough calculator, and here's our extraction your calculator. Um, so both those plugins now, um, the background sets up for you, this button, um, all these buttons set up for you, um, and you can just make that code do what you want. So, this extraction your calculator, for instance, um, is standalone, it's just something you can use on the side um, to work out what your extraction yield is. You can put in um, your dose, um, your shot weight, and your TDS. Um, you can change that to uh, bricks if you prefer by tapping this button. Um, and this button here changes your. Uh, your steps um, by whole numbers or point one of the number. So you can just toggle between those two. So that's, that's that one. This is the pizza dough one. I use this quite regularly um, for making pizza dough. So I can just change my pizza quantity um, and I've got my ingredients here. And they're not related to uh, the machine, but you can make your own thing. You might be able to um, use it for notes or whatever, to have some weather thing. It's endless what you can do. So. Anyway, that describes what, what plugins is, and 
you can turn that off um, and add more. Turn them off there. Um, Okay, so what this button is here is uh, with one of those plugins, you can. Um, I'll just go back to the home page and describe what that's doing. So, unfortunately, a lot of uh, changes you make, you need to restart the app because uh, the app needs to um, load new files. But, um, if I put my app into uh, sleep mode, so I've tapped that icon there and it's uh, now going into the screensaver so I've just got my own images here for screensaver. Um, what I've done here is uh, that page is divided in two sides so on the left hand side if we tap that to wake up um, uh, the, the tablet um, what it's going to do is it's going to wake up the tablet but it's not going to wake up the machine and it's going to go straight to the page that you selected in that button that I was um, I pointed out a minute ago. So it's gone straight to the, um, the page down calculator. Um, so if I scroll through that, back to that page, you can see that's the page I've got selected there. So if I tap this button, um, I can go straight to the home. Uh, well, it's turned off now. So the whole um, sleep page will wake the machine as normal. Um, it'll go to that plugin that plugin, so you can just scroll through the plugins by tapping this button to where you want that page to start. Um, so I've got it set here to pizza. Um, if I go back to the home button, it uh, goes back to this um, screen saver screen. Now, by tapping this side, it doesn't actually wake the machine up. All it's doing is giving access to the app um, without warming the machine up. So in my case, um, I might want to make some pizza dough and I don't want to make a coffee, so I just tap on this side. I go in here, I've got straight to my pizza dough. Um, and I can change the settings and I've got my recipe. Um, and the same, uh, if I set that to the extraction yield, I might make my coffee or I might be doing some cupping and not using my espresso machine. Um, and I can use the extraction yield calculator here. Um, and then when I tap the home button, instead of going to the home, it just goes back to the screensaver. And if I tap this side, it wakes the machine up as normal. It goes to the home page, the machine will start heating up, and you would use it as normal. Um, so, just to go back to that, if that is off, the whole screen, uh, screen works as normal. If there's a um, plug-in showing there, the left side will go to the plugins and wake them up the machine. Okay, so, that's our calibration page, we've done that. This is a new feature. I'll see if we can get to that at the end. Um, and our work, we've done the our workflow, so we've covered that. Our main settings page. Um, everything on this page is exactly the same as what you'll get when you go to the settings uh, button. So if you went to the settings button here, um, and you, you've got these two tabs to machine and, and the app tab. Um, under the machine tab, you've got all your settings that are uh, pertaining to um, change settings to the, with the machine, and these will change settings that are related to the app. Um, I've laid it out a little bit different and gave it a theme similar to DSX. Um, so I can get into Into this page here. So I have basically one page instead of two tabs, um, but I have all these buttons here which go to separate pages. So um, you tap here, you've got the skin list, um, you've got uh, language units and, and some options here, um, which are all going to be the same options except for um, this option here. You can use um, this main settings page. Um, if I selected this now, what that does is, from the home page, it changes this button here, instead of going to um, these settings pages, um, it'll go directly to um, to, that, to this page here. Um, I generally have it off because I like to go to the other page at times, um, but I do use this frequently um, when I'm changing skin and settings. It just 
the slide out for my convenience, and you don't really need it. Um, you might find it convenient or not, but anyway, that's, that's basically what it is. Um, one of the things I do use on this page though is when I do updates, uh, particularly app updates. So at the moment, um, it's showing that the app is up to date. Um, if there was an update there, I select this button down here, or select this uh, option down here, which back up, doesn't back up before I do the update. So what happens now is if I uh, do an update, it will update the entire D1 Plus folder. So not just um, DSX skin, but the whole app will be update, uh, will be backed up. And it will save that backup in the same uh, folder that the D1 folder is kept on the tablet. Um, so what that enables you to do is, if something goes wrong with your app, um, you can just delete the D1 folder and you can rename that backup uh, to D1, uh, to D1 plus, sorry, and everything will be back to exactly the way it was um, in that last state when you did the backup. Um, so, you know, sometimes people might uh, um, find a crash or something and, and the app can't start and you can't get out of it. Um, if you've got that backup, it's, it's very simple to go back and you, you don't have to worry about losing the settings or any your, your data because it was all um, saved for that backup. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the only thing that will be different is, say, like your counters will be different if you've done, uh, if you've used it since that backup. Um, the firmware will just do the same firmware update that uh, it will from clicking the, um, the button from the other settings page. Um, I've moved things around a little bit. So um, in the screen saver button, uh, on the screen saver page, we've got um, like our sleep timer and our brightness for screen saver um, and our time interval um, all on this page. Um, I think they're separated from the other, um, plus your scheduler on this page. So anything to do with um, uh, sleep mode or screen saver mode is on that button. Um, and we've got the machine calibration thing, so this is just taking you to those other pages. So you've got your, um, your two calibration pages there. Um, and that, they work exactly the same, it's just a different way of getting there. Um, and the same with those buttons, the de tra uh, transport and the clean the scale and stuff there. DSX isn't doing anything there, so uh, just a shortcut to those other pages. Um, from this page, you can um, search for your scale or for your machine. Everything's exactly the same. Um, what I've got here, though, is uh, instead of those being on separate pages, you can see what app version, um, and you've got the, the option here. Um, you can see your firmware version from, from this page. So anyway, I think we've gone through that enough. You'll notice uh, on all the, uh, the, uh, the back end pages, um, the DSX version will be down the bottom here, so um, if you have a problem with DSX, uh, it's, it's good to mention what version you've got because uh, that way I know if it's something that's uh, not already been fixed or not. Okay, so that's what that page is about. Um, when you're starting out, you can probably ignore that page. Um, okay, so I think we've gone through... This is the backup page. Um, what we can do here is force a backup rather than doing an update and automatically doing the backup. We can do a backup at any time. So basically I tap that button now, it's telling me to please wait. Um, and that's backing up uh, my entire folder. And, uh, I don't know why it was so slow, but anyway, it's all done. So it's, it's made a copy of it. Um, so I made my current state is backed up. Um, I've got a restore button here, so I probably uh, advise not using that at this stage. What, what it does is restore the DSX settings. Um, I originally set it up to restore the entire app. So we look for the backup and we did delete your current app and restore the, the backup. Um, and it worked quite well, but I had a problem on, uh, on my original 5.1 tablet and I lost um, some files which meant that uh, basically wrecked the app, I had to do a, f a fresh install. And I tried it many, many times, and although it only happened once, I just 
wasn't uh, confident to put it out there, so I stopped doing that. But um, we may develop that more later. But um, what I did then was change that to restore DSX settings. So um, basically, if you did a fresh app install um, and you click this button, it'll go and restore your favourite settings, all the settings you've got set for these cups, um, and all your settings you set in your um, um, your theme set up and, and stuff like that. Um, so we restore all those for you. Um, I personally prefer just transferring the file, so I would go into my um, file explorer here and I, I grab um, this, the folder for my backup. Um, so all my user settings are in this folder, DSX user set, um, and that folder will never be updated with an app, uh, with a skin update. Um, so there's no chance that a uh, skin update will, um, will override those files, unless of course, you do a skin update uh, by updating the main folder here. So when you do the initial install, you would add the DSX folder. From then on, updates you'd only update the code folder or whatever folders I instructed to update. Otherwise, you may override those settings. And if you do, hopefully you've got that backup and you can just copy that uh, folder back and that will put all your settings back for you. Okay, so um, that's what the backup is. Um, let's go through those poses again, see, make sure I've covered them all. So back up the store. Okay, so we've been around, we've covered the skin pretty well. The only thing we have question. Yeah. Evening. Can we look at the uh, main settings page again, the machine calibration? E? Yeah. Yeah. I, is, I don't know if this is just a simulated view or not, but what, what the heck with four milliliters a second on the steam flow rate? Uh, I'm running this app on my Mac, so it's uh, similar. It's not actually connected to my machine. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, so, well, um, John has dummy values in the app. Um, so the app will check whether it's uh, an Android or whether it's some other operating system. And if it's some op other operating system, um, it puts in random numbers um, so that we can test. And that's why you're um, The 4.0 mils per second flow rate <clears throat> is an R&D thing. Right now, the firmware maxes at 2.5 mils per second. And it's just because we have some, right, right now our heaters max at 10 amps, but I have some heaters coming that go all the way to 20 amps. So I just plan to be able to do that, um, that flow rate higher. I mean, it might just blast a hole in your table, but we'll find out. Okay, thanks. I'm going to have to get stronger milk jugs here than put holes in Okay, so there's one more feature which is uh, it's only a few weeks old. Um, so if we go back to that workflow page, we've got this section in the middle here. Um, what it is is a move on by weight. Um, so I think first I'd like to describe what a Profile does, um, and most most of us will be familiar with profiles. But uh, if you've not used the machine before, um, or you're new to it, um, what we do is we create a profile, or, or the machine will come with uh, various profiles, um, and you load that profile and it tells the machine um, how to extract the, the shot, how to what to do with your espresso. Um, when we load a profile, um, say for instance, I'm gonna to go to Damien's LRB2. Um, if I go to the, the second tab here, um, that is where you, you set up all the settings for that profile. Um, you've got some preview here. I don't worry about that graph. Um, different ones will look like this. Um, so there's, there's three, types, uh, three types of profiles. There's three different wizards that John's created. Um, got what we call advanced profile. Um, we've got a pressure and a flow profile. And there's other videos on that, so I won't go too much into it. Um, but basically, this tab here is gonna reflect the type of profile. Uh, in this case, it's the advanced profile. Um, so what I wanna show you with the advanced profiles is um, each step, uh, this list on the side here, has different ways of finishing. Um, so when this, step starts, it can finish by time, 
um, it can finish by um, a move on state. So we can, we can sit, uh, select this option here to move on if one of these conditions become true. Um, so this, in this instance, I've got it set to, uh, if the pressure is over one bar, it would move on. Um, I could set it to a uh, pressure to tundra. Uh, I could set it to a flow setting by taking uh, these and, and making an adjustment there. Um, so what, the way the machine works is, um, whichever event comes first, um, it will move on. So if it never reaches um, this move on setting, it will move on when it times out of 25 seconds. Here. Um, and we set that for each step. Now, what we can do with DSX is we can move on by weight. Um, in this case here, I've got this step set to move on to the volume. Um, so I'll just cancel out of that and go back to here. We can move on by um, weight at scale. Um, and we can use two options there. We can use um, weight flow or weight mass. Weight mass is the cumulative weight that's in your cup. Um, weight flow is the, the weight rate. So it's like, um, like your water flow rate, but it's the, the, the weight, the scale is this, um, detecting. Um, one way to probably describe that is if we go back to the, um, to the graph here, and we get rid of some of this, all this noise on the screen. Um, we've got two curves here. We've got um, grams, and you can see here with this shot, um, this uh, heavier curve shows a weight rate. So this is grams per second. Um, but you can see the weight in the cup accumulates here, goes up, so it keeps increasing. It can't decrease because there's more and more going in, it's not coming out. Um, yet our, our flow rate, um, or our weight rate can decrease, the same as flow. Um, so we have those two options um, here. We've got um, the mass of flow, and we can use either of those to move on. Um, and the way that works is, um, I'll go into that page, so we can tap this uh, area here to go into that page, or we can um, use the arrow key to move to the page. Um, so this is the what I call DSX copy setup page. Um, there's three sections to this page. Uh, there's that weight that I've been describing here, the move on at weight, um, and we can set these settings here. So um, the important thing here, your profile must have this wording um, within the pro within that step name. So this is my profile I've got loaded here. I'm going to go back here and load. Um, this profile, and I'm going to go back here and show you the steps. Actually. So this profile uh, steps doesn't have that wording in, in the uh, steps. Um, so if I run that profile now, it's going to ignore any settings I have for that move on at weight. Um, if I load a profile, say um, I've got some templates here, so I'm just going to load this profile. If I go to that profile, um, you can see these. This profile's got step names that reflect saturating, uh, pressurizing, and extracting. Um, so now, if I was to run this profile, um, when it comes to step two here, saturating, um, it's going to um, it's going to look for the, this condition for those conditions. So in this case, I've got um, the flow condition turned off. But it's going to look for 0.4 grams in the cup. Um, if there's 0.4 grams in the cup, it's going to move on to the next step. Um, if one of those other conditions though of the profile uh, for this step, I haven't got a move on set here, but if I had this set um, or this time um, run out of time, um, it's going to it's going to uh, move on with the first event that occurs. So uh, just something to keep in mind there. Um, so we've only got three options. We can only use three steps, um, but you can duplicate those steps. So what we can do is I can have a step one called saturating, I can have step two called saturating uh, for the second time, or saturating two, or um, could be blooming saturating, or whatever. So long as it's got the word saturating in there, um, it will use the steps. And the same for pressurizing um, and extracting. Um, but what you need to keep in mind is if you've got two steps with the word saturating in there, it's going to use those settings for both those steps. Um, and that's where a flow um, 
setting might come in handy. So, so for instance, if I was using a profile curve, um, it's going to look like this graph. Um, and I want to use that um, move on and wait step for where it's increasing pressure here. So I didn't want my flow to go um, over a set flow rate into the cup. Um, when I increase pressure here, I could have that uh, move on and wait during that uh, pressure rise stage as well as this stage here. And I can use that same setting. Um, so, so for instance, I, I want to um, I want the flow rate, or like an actual flow rate, a weight flow rate of uh, two grams per second. Um, I would set it here, um, and I'll just turn it off. And I would make those two steps um, with the same name. Um, I could either use the same name, or I could uh, just call one saturating um, pressure, um, and the other one saturating hold, or something like that. Whatever, you can use your imagination there. But, um, or I can use them separately. So I could use um, saturating for, for my blooming step or my shaking step, saturating as the name suggests. Um, pressurizing, so when it's uh, holding the pressure, um, or building pressure, I name those steps for pressurizing. And extraction, e extracting, um, what I call extracting is um, this part here. So when I refer to a profile, um, I call this fill. So basically getting um, all the water, uh, all the airspace above the puck full of water, I call it fill. Um, and then I like to move on to low pressure from fill. Um, and then um, I, this is uh, often referred to as blooming, I call it soaking. Um, um, in, in this case, I ca I'm calling it saturating. Um, so this is the saturating stage, and then this stage here is the extraction stage. Um, so you build up the pressure and you do the extraction. And that's what I've, I've tried to, uh, well, I've labeled these accordingly, so. Um, I think I've, uh, if there's any questions, let me know. I think I've described it the best I can. Um, we've got two buttons up here you can use. Um, these buttons will work with John's uh, fast tap feature. So um, if I tap that rapidly, it will change uh, whole numbers um, I've got this. If I tap that star, we'll do small increments. Tap it fast, it does uh, big increments. Um, I find that a bit hard to use sometimes. Um, I do use it, but uh, probably more so on the app. It works better for me than on, um, on my Mac. Uh, on my Mac, I'm often tapping this button instead. So this will just toggle and do the same thing. So this will hold it at point uh, one, uh, at one, one Sorry, 1.0 increments, and then I'll tap it again and change back to 0.1 increments. So you can see there, um, that goes up to 1. Sorry, Damien, I have a question. The flow, is that setting the flow rate, or is that moving on to the next step if that flow rate is hit? No, it's moving on. It's, they move on steps. So how is um, that different so than the flow rate move on that's already in the advanced shots? Works exactly the same. Um, except you're using the scale instead of the um, flow. So if we look at this graph here, um, my flow is, is the same as uh, the weight going in the cup, the flow rate's the same, um, but that might not always be the case, um, whether it's a calibration thing or, or something else. So for instance, here, when I go up to pressure, this is where it can come in very handy. When I go up to pressure, the machine's going to uh, pump as much water in as it can. So I'll just go to that step and show you when we pressure up, um, it's a pressure step. So, and it, because it's a fast transition, it's going to go from the three bar hold that I had for the previous steps up to nine bar as fast as it can. And the way to get there is to pump the water in as quick as it can. Um, if I had a move on step now, um, say a flow over um, two mils per second, it's, it's just going to move on because the uh, machine's going to go pump water faster than that, trying to get to nine bar. Um, with uh, move on by weight, um, that weight, the, the flow coming out isn't going to be fast. Um, it's only the, the water flow going in, which is the difference in the two measures. So now what I can do is, uh, I'll go back to this profile, um, show you on the graph. 
So what I can do here is if I only want um, a flow coming out of say two mils per second, when I increase here or do the uh, pressure rise, um, I can set a setting to two mils per second, which means I'm not going to reach my uh, nine bar goal. It's, the pressure is going to be a lower pressure, but my flow rate is never going to go over two mils per second. So you, you kind of flow profiling using pressure. Um, so then my curve would, um, would, would curve around here somewhere uh, at lower pressure, um, and it would then start declining. Um, with my profile, I've got the decline rate basically to get a flat flow curve. Um, so if if my uh, I'll just recap on that. If my grind was a little bit coarse. Um, when I go to build up pressure here, instead of going up to say three mils per second and, and it turns at nine bar, um, I can turn it um, at a lower pressure and maintain that flow. Um, so that's one difference you wouldn't be able to do without that. Um, right, I understand it. So the word flow really means in cup flow as opposed to flow rate in yeah. into the pocket. Yeah. So that's good. Have you adapted your Slayer profile to use this? Because the big problem with Slayer profile I provide is that it needs to be run twice. Once to see when first drip is, and then you change the timer to then be first drip. So first, the, the profile is set to do like 50 seconds of pre-infusion. <clears throat> but for me, the first drip is around 37 seconds. I run it once, notice first drip, stop the shot, throw it out, change my timer 37 seconds, then redo it. And that's because I, my profile doesn't have first drip detection. I'm wondering if you can do that now. Um, not with the existing profiles, unless you change that step name, um, then if you change that second step to and call it saturating, I can't remember what I've got in the um, Slayer profile. I think it might be soak or something like that for the name of second. The second step, I've probably got it here. Um, anyway, it's, it's not so important. Um, if that second step was called saturating, it could use this feature. So it could detect first drip. So if I turn that off um, and put this down to something small like um, 0.5 grams, um, I find if I go down too small to so 0.1 gram, um, it, it, I, I haven't actually had a trigger, but I'm just concerned about it triggering early um, with some vibration or something. But 0.2 grams um, should be enough. You should get enough inertia to get that actual first drop in the cup and detect uh, that first drop and be able to move on. So with that experiment, if you did, that's the way I would have done it in the past as well. I would have uh, monitored the first drip and then used this. One of the problems is though, that first drip timing can vary. Um, you can change 0.2 grams if you uh, bean dose, um, or you can change your grind slightly. The temperature might be a little bit warmer one day. Um, and that timing of that first drip is going to be, it's going to be out. Um, and this is where this can be advantageous again, is that we can actually um, detect the actual first drip by using the scale and move on from there. Um, and I'm actually using that now. So um, my, most common use profile is uh, LRB2. Um, what I did was with LRB3, it uses LRB2. Um, and just before I go into that, with this profile here, uh, Londinium, um, is the exact copy of what LRB2 is. Um, it's just that when you load DSX, it's going to uh, install this for you. Um, so if you're not using DSX, you can still use that profile, um, using that profile there. Um, so if I go back to um, into here, what I did was I made LRB3 because what I wanted to do was um, try and move on to keep a constant flow. Um, and, and the way I did that was uh, use what we were describing earlier about um, monitoring that flow rate. Um, so if we have a look at LRB3, what I, what I did there was um, move on with a flow rate um, rather than a pressure time. So when I get up to uh, pressure up to the nine bar, 
Um, I stay at nine bar until the flow reaches 1.9 mils per second, and then I start my decline. And my decline is at a, a rate of decline that maintains that, that constant flow. Um, the problem with doing this is I, I, I can't have that move on uh, on the pressure increase here because what I was saying before, the machine's going to pump water in really quickly to build up that pressure. Um, so I, what happens is when I run this profile now, um, the flow rate is going to be um, constant out. The flow rate is going to level out like it is shown here. Um, but it's going to be at different levels all the time, depending on the pump resistance. Um, because it's not going to move on until um, that pressure has been raised. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So um, that's where, with, um, with DSX, with, with this move on by weight, um, I can get the same flow rate um, easier by using um, these templates here set up the same profile. So this actually sets up LRB3 profile, um, but changes the step with different step names. So it's a, it's a, it'll give you the exact same tasting shot as an LRB2 or LRB3, um, but it's gonna use these step names and we can use, move on first drops here. Um, and with this template, when I load this template, it's setting up these steps here so you can test it out um, without having to know too much about it. You can just click on here and go run that shot. So I'm going to the home page now and do that shot. Um, and you don't have to change anything. And in fact, this is the shot that I'm actually using at the moment. Um, so if I go back into there, um, I started setting up two others as well. Um, there was a profile I put out recently um, to simulate the, um, the lever machine, um, the lever profile, and that profile is copied here, but uses these steps um, and uses, because it's a, a similar profile in, in the wave shape where you put the fill, um, the infusion stage and then the extraction stage, um, it, it can use the same steps and I've set up the same, so but I haven't really played with it too much. So. Um, I'm kind of hoping that um, others with, with like that type of copy will uh, come up with settings and then we can, we can uh, fine tune that so that uh, new users can just have that button um, and we'll set it up as the uh, best, best way to set that up. And I also created one called Fruity. Um, I started playing a lot with light roast and drinking them as straight espressos, doing long extractions and things like that. I was just trying to experience what other people like. Um, and this is a profile I started using um, to try and get that fruity flavour. So it gives a little bit less body, um, but sort of uh, focuses in um, on those fruity acidic type flavours. Um, so what I did was convert that profile I was using um, to a template as well. And again, this will be developed with time um, to, to get a uh, to set up a template that works um, that works best. So that's basically what these template buttons are. Um, on the right hand side here we've got um, the, the information about that profile and temperature changes. So this is a new feature as well. We've got global temperature change. Um, Here's the profile I've got loaded. And again, we can tap that name and go to the profile page. So I can load in the profile. This was the other profile I was describing the uh, LM lever. Um, so I load LRB2 into the profile name here. And this is the profile steps. So it's listing all the profile steps and the temperature for each one of those steps. So if I go back into the profile, um, you can see I've got 89 degrees C for step one. You can see I decrease that temperature slightly by half a degrees. Um, and then for the extraction part and the pause part, I'm pouring at 88 degrees C. Um, and if we go back here, you can see those, those steps are reflected here. Um, and what we can do now is we can change all those steps in one go. So um, we're changing it by 0.5 degrees C. If, um, if you've got your machine set for uh, degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to show 0.9 degrees F um, here. So when I tap this side or this side, it's going to go up or down by this increment. Um, and what it's going to do, keep bumping my mouse there, sorry. Um, if I increase that by half a degree C, um, you can see that's gone up to uh, 89.5, we go up another 
half a degree, it's gone up to 90 degrees C. And you can also see up here that it's changing the um, profile name. Uh, you can see it's reflecting that change. And what the idea is there is, if I tap this profile name now, I go back to the uh, profile list box here, um, and it's set that name in the save file here. So if I tap that uh, key to save it, it's just created a new file with that temperature um, as a, a, um, on the end of the profile name. So um, now what I can do is I can load my original um, and I can pour a shot with that and I can quickly uh, load this with a different temperature and pour another shot and then I can taste them side by side um, and they're going to be similar temperature, hope like cool down at a similar rate. Um, so I can, I can do multiple shots that way um, and you can just delete that if you don't want it, so just snap and delete it. Um, now, you don't have to save the shot as well. So, <clears throat> say for instance, I've loaded um, LRB2 here, uh, and I make a shot, and I taste it, and I go, oh, I wonder what that's going to taste like. Um, there's a little bit of fruity that's coming through. There's no, um, there's no astringency or, or bitterness. Um, so I think that profile could probably, we could try a higher temperature for that. Um, what we can do is we can, we can go straight into that profile um, increase the temperature. So I'll bump it up so three degrees or something like that. And then I can just extract that shot, the shot straight away. It's telling me there that, that temperature's been changed. Well, I can tell that by the profile. And it'll uh, do that shot straight away. So I haven't actually saved it. Um, it just, it'll be just a one off. So what happens is if I go and select a different profile or made a pro uh, favourite, um, that if, setting is gone so it hasn't been saved um, and of course I could go in there um, change that and I could save that then there's a uh, favor by tapping one of these cups and then load that setting um, into a favorite so for instance I save it to the pink cup here um, you can see I've laid that profile if I um, load one of the other profiles come back here it's loaded that with the temperature setting um, so I think that's, some people will find that pretty handy. People have been asking for a global temperature change for a while. So I think that might be a feature that some people would like to use. Okay, so I think we've got everything covered. I think.